So another big week for Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency keeps hitting all new fresh highs. And I'm wondering, what do you think is behind the current rally? Do you think it's all the excitement surrounding the spot Bitcoin ETFs coupled with the upcoming Bitcoin halving? And how much of that is part of the equation? Yeah, it's it's no surprise that the ETFs have really contributed pretty dramatically to Bitcoin's latest rise. Um, obviously, in very concrete terms, there have been about $9 billion in net inflows into these ETFs um, in the past or since they've launched in January, which has been pretty impressive. Um, but certainly a large part of it is also, is also just an endorsement of Bitcoin as an asset and crypto as an asset category. Um, it's sort of tacitly endorsing um, you know, the, these assets and allowing people to purchase them from their brokerage accounts just the way they would purchase you know, normal in, uh, S&P in ETFs or things like that. Um, the having is always a popular topic. I think it's a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy where certainly, you know, a reduction in issuance of Bitcoin does help the uh, price by making it more scarce. But a large part of it is also just bringing it back into headlines, having it be top of mind. Um, you know, in practice, the ETF flows are substantially larger than any sort of uh, increased issuance in, in Bitcoin uh, from Bitcoin miners. So. I think it's not a more of a material change and more of just a change in, in perception uh, of the asset. Sticking with small Bitcoin ETFs, I want to point to some data from Dragonfly, actually. It says about $2 billion flowed into these ETFs this past week alone. And as of this week, the ETFs account for more than 4% of the current Bitcoin supply. So what does that signal to you? I think it signals that um, investors who have been on the sidelines, they've maybe been curious about Bitcoin or um, interested in purchasing it, have been uh, waiting for these ETFs to finally be approved by the SEC and being able to purchase them um, via their traditional brokerage accounts. Um, historically, certainly there were ways to purchase Bitcoin through private placement funds or obviously just buying it through Coinbase. But for a lot of investors, um, that simply just wasn't accessible enough. Um, maybe they wanted to purchase Bitcoin out of a tax advantaged um, savings account, for example. Um, and so it's it's not just that, but we also have people like Larry Fink going on TV and um, you know speaking uh, praises and saying great things about Bitcoin as an asset. And so um, it's it's not just the you know mechanistic component of making it easier for people to purchase these things, lowering management fees, um, but also just um, endorsing the concept of Bitcoin and crypto as an asset class. So, do you anticipate this momentum will continue in the foreseeable future, or do you expect a steep correction in the mix? It, candidly, I've been surprised by how short-term bullish the ETFs have been for uh, crypto and for Bitcoin. Um, I think long-term, obviously, structurally, it makes it easier for capital to flow into Bitcoin. And the U.S. is you know, the largest, most sophisticated capital market in the world. So it matters a lot more when the U.S. has access to ETFs, even though ETFs have been out for a while in Europe. Um, I think the most impressive thing so far has been that Bitcoin and uh, this Bitcoin rally has been in the face of a still pretty tight macro environment. I think originally people were expecting more rate cuts earlier this year. Um, in 2022, there was this narrative that um, Bitcoin is just another risk asset. It's going to trade down along with the rest of all these other risk assets. And in fact, Bitcoin has really been outperforming. Um, you know, small cap tech has still kind of been, um, you know, lingering, lingering around its, its, you know, 2020, 2021 levels. But Bitcoin has rallied alongside um, you know, the rest of, of sort of macro cap tech. And so and, and gold, for that matter, also reaching new time highs. And so Bitcoin is really finding its place in the world and finding its, its narrative. And that is, I think, in increasingly attractive. So another big story this week, Ethereum's next big upgrade. What do you think will happen to Ethereum's price and how will this upgrade impact the industry as a whole? Yeah, people are really excited for uh, Denkun. I think a large part of Ethereum's story has been about smart contract scalability. How do we bring this technology to the next billion people? And Ethereum's path to doing that has been through what we call layer twos, um, which you can think of as small mini blockchains that run alongside Ethereum, the main blockchain. These L2s host their state data, post their ledgers back to Ethereum to sort of borrow from its security, and they pay fees to Ethereum, the chain, in order to do so. Denkun makes it substantially cheaper for those L2s to pay fees back to Ethereum, which in turn makes users of these sort of mini blockchains um, pay much less fees and makes it much less uh, access makes, makes it much more accessible, um, you know, on the order of a fraction of a cent to send a stablecoin or send USDC to someone on the other side of the world and 
Um, I think that is a large part of the crypto story is um, global accessible uh, financial services. I want to turn to AI and crypto. According to Coinbase's report on AI and crypto from last week, many AI related crypto tokens have outperformed Bitcoin and Ether starting in Q4 of last year. So what does that signal to you? I understand you have a bit of a contrarian view. I think we are a little bit more cautious around the crypto AI intersection than a lot of other funds. Um, I think if you look at the rally in a lot of these AI tokens, a lot of it is, most of it, I would say, is, is based more on narrative than on fundamentals. A lot of it kind of started after the Sam Altman OpenAI board drama. There was this concern around the future of um, AI models and whether or not we want you know, a small number of large corporations to be running them, have access to them, and everyone else have to go through these, these intermediaries. Um, the AI token narrative is the idea that maybe there can be a decentralized model that can run in a decentralized way so that it can't be censored, it can't go down, it can't be subject to the whims of a small number of people. I think if you look on the ground from a fundamentals perspective, there's still very little usage and, and traction for most of these crypto AI networks, but things could change in the future. There's a lot of tech, there's a lot of research going into this area, um, a lot of smart people working on novel products. So we are investigating, we're looking at the data, uh, we're looking for interesting investment opportunities. But right now it feels again, like a lot of um, narrative uh, building is really what's driving uh, this rally. So in a nutshell, how do you think AI, the Denkun upgrade and the upcoming Bitcoin having, how do you think all three components will impact crypto moving forward? I think, you know, in aggregate, again, crypto has really been a surprising rally um, given what the state of, of, of macro is. Um, if you look at a lot of the, you know, again, smaller cap tech stocks that were outperforming in 2021, 2022, that have gotten killed as interest rates have, have risen, um, crypto is not like that. Crypto is finding its own footing um, in the sense that um, it can perform like a, you know, uh, inflation hedge as Bitcoin has done. It is a novel um, technology application that does have real, uh, tr you know, transaction volume. I think in aggregate, stable coins are on, on, on pace to do more volume than Visa this year. And that continues to grow year over year. And so really the story, all these three things are just real just tailwinds of an endorsement of crypto as an asset category and the maturation of the techno technology to be able to serve billions of people. Now, obviously, Dragonfly is a venture capital firm. So before I let you go, I'm curious, what are you paying attention to right now? Is it L2s, infrastructure, NFTs, CeFi, DeFi? What are you focused on right now? What are you thinking of investing in? It's all of the above. Um, I think for us, you know, we are really a technology driven venture fund at the end of the day. Um, a lot of our best investments have been in smart contract scalability. So new layer twos, new ways to move assets across bridges, even new blockchains that have really fundamental technical breakthroughs that allow these things to scale again to billions of users. Um, we're also seeing a lot of excitement around consumer applications that use crypto in novel ways, um, things like international remittances or things like um, consumer banking apps that use stable coins as a way to bring dollar based savings account to places like Turkey or Argentina that have suffered from pretty incredible inflation. And so um, crypto is a little bit like the blind men feeling the elephant where it really depends on uh, you know, where you're looking at it um, to, to sort of get a sense of a different perspective. So um, we are investing across the board and, and overall, we've seen really amazing entrepreneurs continue to enter this space and continue to build.